Good evening, Willowdale, and welcome to Meet Your Neighbor, NeighborLink North York's weekly interview se series. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you've tuned in before, welcome one and all. For 23 Mondays in 2021, we've introduced you to new neighbors in the spirit of building a more connected community. And for our last episode of the year, we thought we'd invite all of Willowdale to a little virtual holiday celebration with some of NeighborLink North York staff. It's a chance to reflect on the year we've had together and our memories here in Willowdale. So tonight, we've got our Meet Your Neighbor hosts and NeighborLink's Executive Director, Lily Chang, our Recruitment and Development Manager, Maria Spear, our Outreach Worker, Colleen Stevens, and me, Sebastian Biasucci, NeighborLink's Marketing and Event Manager. I am so honored to be up here with three of my favorite North York moms. Now let's get this party started. Allow me to introduce our hostess with the mostess, Lily Chang. Thank you, Sebastian, and happy Monday, fellow Willowdellers. We are counting down to Christmas, and hopefully all of you are nestled warm in your home tonight. Want to give a big shout out to Howie Kluger, the founder and moderator of Willowdale in the 70s. He has been championing a fundraiser for our food bank, and thus far we have raised a little over $5,000 towards the $10,000 goal set by Willowdale in the 70s. So Round of applause for Howie. Thank you, Howie, for all your dedication to our work and for fostering community. And we should also say welcome back to Willowdale, because as you may or may not know, Howie moderates the biggest fan club for Willowdale all the way in the US of A. So we welcome him back into Canadian territory. I also want to shout out to Grace Reed, who started a thread in the Willowdale Neighbors Connect group today, offering her services of helping to teach new Canadians or struggling Canadians how to skate. And wow, what a response. A lot of our neighbors could not get into Parks and Rec skating lessons. Everyone wants to up their skating game when there's so few activities that we can do safely now. And so we look forward to some plans in the coming new year where some of us can get out on the ice and sharpen our skills on our skates together. So thank you, Grace, for offering your support to our community. All right, well, without further ado, I am so excited to be talking to some of my favorite people here in Willowdale. The only caveat is how will we meet together and it not be like a work meeting? <laughs> I just don't know. Uh, hopefully, you know, the festive mood that we're all in is gonna help. So come on in guys and let's have a chit chat. Woohoo! Hello, hello. So, yes, thank you. And for all of you who are just tuning in, this is what you see here the core team at Neighbor Lake North York. Uh, we are the little engine that could, right? So, you know, the story of the little engine. And we often have to root ourselves, <laughs> root for ourselves to get up that hill. Uh, and a great example of that was our Christmas market. Uh, you know, when the idea first floated around, we're like, it'll be a small Christmas market, maybe four or five vendors. It'll just be, you know, a, our toe will dip into the water and we'll just give it a try. And then suddenly a few weeks later, we're hanging lights on a windy day in the middle of the night, day, uh, winter. And wow, what a beautiful scene it was. So uh, maybe let's that be the first question. Uh, what was that like uh, a couple weeks ago, just watching that unfold, uh, being participant to it, contributing, but also watching the magic unfold? And we'll start with Sebastian. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so funny. We're talking about that like it was like it was only two weeks ago and it, it feels like a million years ago and yesterday at the same time. But yeah, it was nothing short of a of a miracle. And, you know, to see like, you know, and especially in the place that we are in right now where the holidays are looking, you know, you know, we're back in a place of like, what's going to happen? Wh wh how many people can we see to have a place where we were safe at the time and could gather together? You know, I thought back to Christmas of 2020 when we were all, you know, shut away and, and couldn't see our loved ones. So 
I could tell, I mean, it's what I needed for the holidays. And it seemed like the general consensus was it, what, what everyone needed. It was to, to be together, to meet neighbors, you know, walking around. Like there were businesses that were just starting. That to me was so exciting. You know, there was a, a group selling delicious like uh, jerky and they had like launched their business two weeks ago. So it was a chance for, you know, new neighbors to meet, new businesses to get off the ground, people to perform. Um, it just felt like what we what we all needed. So, yeah, I wish I could just live it again. Not to maybe set up the tents at 8 a.m., but. Yeah. But I will say, like, it was really a miracle if you think about where we are now. And yeah. in terms of just, like, if we were where we are now, we would have had to cancel for sure. And secondly, the weather miracles, right? So, uh, the Sunday, the Saturday after, it was like a blustery, snowy, wet, snowy day. We would have had to cancel. Uh, it was freezing cold the following week. So, uh, it, you know, it was like a little pocket of magic that was yes. just for us, for Willowdale. Even hour by hour, like, you know, we the four of us were there at one point where all of a sudden the wind got insane and it was like the wizard of oz like we were flying around like tents were good. I, I yeah it was i was i was i'll be honest willowdale i was nervous and then <laughs> su suddenly the wind subsided the tents you know stayed even though they were weighed down lily you need to tell the people of willowdale what you did because we, we ran out of weights to weigh down the uh to weigh down the tent. So what did you do? What did you and Maria go do? <laughs> well, I just thought, you know, we could, you know, rent more weights, spend money on buying some weights. But then I thought, well, you know, we have a food bank that needs rice. So why not buy 10 kg bags of rice? So I think who went with me to <laughs> Loblaws is Maria. And we filled my trunk with rice. Yeah, we saw you coming up Willowdale Avenue. Your front tires were off the ground. <laughs> your, your, your trunk was just weighed down by rice. Oh, and how about you, Maria? How was that experience of watching that new miracle unfold in our neighborhood? Well, I was at the front with everyone. And um, yeah, it was wonderful seeing everyone that I didn't think was going to show up showing up. Cause I, you know, we expected maybe like 200 people and we're like, oh, like, you know, only 30% of them will show up. And all of a sudden I'm on the, the mic thing being like, there's so many people here. They're going to reach Young Street. <laughs> and everyone was so surprised and excited. And it was just beautiful to watch, you know, the community that everyone needed and the event that, you know, everyone probably didn't know they needed, but they needed. So that was, uh. It was really, really beautiful. I just hope everyone trying to get in. Yeah, and we're so grateful because Maria, you volunteered your hubby to come in and help us hang those lights too. So it's always, you know, helpful when we multiply our team. <laughs> and Colleen, how about you? Um, you know, putting together that market is a really good example of what it's like working with NeighborLink and we love Willowdale and that is everything is possible and even if we've never done it before and it needs to be done to bring the community together something like a Christmas parade and other than two years ago I'd never been to a Christmas parade before you kind of envision it together and you pull people together and then make it happen. And when I arrived in the morning, I'd say I was really amazed by how many people had come together to make it happen. So how many people were it resonated with enough to be there. And uh, I was really impressed with the Willowdale Presbyterian Church ladies who were there with us the whole day and had that great little warming room and and I love the stage and that lady who did the Zumba that was the best part for me because <laughs> it was cold and she had so much energy and she was dressed up and the kids loved it and there was this little stage and I I thought for me that was the highlight 
was that yeah. that lady doing the Zumba? Like she Yeah, was. Syra Fazil. She was awesome. She she mm. crushed it. All those performers. Like I don't have the students playing from Willowdale School of Music, shout out to them with their like tiny little hands <laughs> cold playing um the violin and piano. That was like those are true professionals. I've seen a lot of performers. Those were seasoned professionals out there from the Willowdale <laughs> School of Music. They were awesome. Well, and they had a, their own cheering team there. So yes. many of the friends, some of them just happened to be there and saw their classmate playing and were able to root for them. And yeah, so many amazing things. Greg McGee, who brought sidecar Santa. Oh, Greg Smee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, our new, he's yes. our new friend. He's our new <laughs> Willowdale friend. He should be on the, he'll be in January, maybe a feature. So yeah, so Colleen, I think you really captured it that um, through our work together, what is probably one of the most amazing things is we can imagine new things together for the community and they come to fruition, not because we're so talented and skilled, but because these visions are not just from us and they're certainly not about us. They really just capture the hearts of and imaginations of our community. It's what the community wants and needs. And often we're just responding to what we see the community suggesting to us. So uh, it's all possible because we live in an amazing neighborhood. So 100%. on that note, uh, the next question I want to ask is, what does community mean to you? Because, you know, we talk a lot about community in our work meetings, in the work that we do, uh, in our event planning. And so, you know, it's kind of a topic we really chewed on as an organization. But what does community mean to you personally? And we'll start with Colleen this time. Um. So I've been an outreach worker with NeighborLink for a year. And before I was in this role, I worked for a long time, maybe in total 20 years, welcoming newcomers to Canada and international students. And when there are newcomers coming, um, what they're looking for is a connection. And so even when my children were young, we went to the park every day at Kenneth and Bing, every day. And every two weeks, there was a new mom and a new baby there from a different country. And they were walking around the neighborhood looking for a friend. And they could join and share our toys and share a snack back in the day when we could share snacks and share toys. And the sand, there was still sand at the Ken Kenneth and Bing Park until they put in that black stuff that's there now. But um, we always, there was one grandma who had a daycare and then we went and there were as a core group of moms and then they, and then newcomers would come and meet at the park in the morning with their babies. And we'd introduce ourselves and they needed that connection. They didn't know anyone. And it's the same with the international students. Um, who we see walking around, uh, they need the connection too. And they are con they connect in Willowdale because of, well, they call it Korea, I guess, Koreatown. So along Young Street, they feel at home here and they're trying to connect with um, what Canada is like. So um, yeah, that's the time I, I've been spending in Willowdale. I guess even before I started with NeighborLink was finding ways to connect people who are new to Canada. And um, so it's continuing with NeighborLink and um, now it's just everybody, everybody, whoever I meet um, connecting would, in the same way. So. I would say that anyone new to Willowdale needs a connection and even people who've been here for decades because i have heard from longtime residents um you know that a lot of neighbors have moved away left the community and they don't know their neighbors anymore mm. so i think 
that life is better when we know our neighbors. That's kind of like a core value that we've brought into our work is trying to foster that connectivity. And you've been living it for decades right here in Willowdale. So it's great that you are part of our team, Colleen. We appreciate you. How about you, Maria? Yeah. Well, I'm going to echo what both of you said. Um, and community to me does mean being connected. And I've um, really learned that over the past two years in this pandemic. Um, it's interesting. I didn't know my neighbors. So we've only been living in the place that we're currently in for three years. Um, and I was shy. <laughs> and I felt comfortable with a few people that I didn't know in the neighborhood. and. Because of the pandemic, um, I got connected to one of our neighbors, actually. Uh, so at the beginning of the pandemic, we were doing grocery pickups for mostly seniors. And uh, we got a call like from England. And I was like, oh, and this person said, oh, my mom needs grocery help. Is there anyone that can help her? And we saw her address. And I was like, that's my neighbor. <laughs> my neighbor. She was only two doors away from me. Um, so I got brave and I went over to her door, knocked on her door. And I mean, we built a really lovely relationship over the past two years. And that kind of also propelled me to then kind of meet my other neighbors. And, and I like to think of like my backyard as this beautiful thing where it was like, was previously a mud pit was something that was brought together by our neighbors because, you know, I finally decided to say hi and it became like a work in progress where I feel like all of us, um, you know, one neighbor is like, oh, I'll do that ladder work for you. Or like, oh, I'll lend you this tool. Or like another neighbor just came over and, you know, we figured out like a schedule where we could work our, you know, work out our yards together and stuff. And it's just really, it's, it's become so much, it has become a lot nicer. And um, I am thankful to know them. That is a wonderful example, I think, of the silver edge lining of this cloud of a pandemic, right? We spent way more time in our homes and in our communities walking and therefore seeing neighbors. How has that been for you, Sebastian? What has been your experience of community? Yeah, it's just that. I mean, I've lived in Willowdale my whole life. So for 26 years, but I was, you know, I went to school downtown um, for university and I was working downtown. So my community was sort of centered in the places I was spending most of my time in, which was not Willowdale for such a long time uh, in the last few years before the pandemic. And, you know, I would say I identified with being or trying to be a part of the theater community in, in Toronto. Like, so to me, community meant, okay, a group of people that really share this, like, love for something or a passion or, um, you know, are united by something like that. And I, I wondered, could it, you know, a community be something as simple as, you know, where the thing that people have in common is they share the same geographical area and being, you know, you know, home for the pandemic and spending so much time in my home, you know, and that aligning with starting uh, to work at, at NeighborLink was this opportunity to like open my eyes to that, you know, the community wasn't just built on the fact that like, oh, we all live in this radius. It's, you know, there is so much more that unites, um, you know, the members of this neighborhood. If you take that time to, um, to invest in, in learning about one another and, and striking up those, you know, those conversations, I was sort of like Maria too, like it's nerve wracking. Where do you start? Um, and it can be as simple, you know, I've walked down the street with you, Lily. And before, I don't know if I was the type of person who like said hi while crossing the street. And, and, and now I am because it, it okay. is so simple and it, you know, it can be just that, that can start something deeper because, you know, I started with NeighborLink seven months ago and, you know, a small conversation that happened at the beginning has turned into this like really amazing, you know, reciprocal relationship where we're trying to support one another, even doing these interviews for the last 23 weeks. It's, you know, just learning people's stories. And when you take that leap, you you, you build community, but it sometimes feels like it takes a bit of courage, but if we break through the bubble, I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, 
you see people a lot. You see people walking with their masks on down the street. And it's even harder now to make a connection when we're afraid to breathe each other's air. Uh, and I try very hard. Sometimes maybe <laughs> I'm too loud, but I'm like, hi, like, and I have to yell it if I'm <laughs> like, hi. <laughs> but I just want people to like know that they're seen hey i see you and i just want to give you my smiley eyes because i want you to just feel like you are important here in this place that we call home and and you know to me like so the the whole uh i guess foundation of north york moms which i started eight years ago is that the geography that ties us together because you can connect with moms from around the world in in many forums now with digital channels you can do that easily but there is something about shared space shared mm -hmm. sense of yes that's the coffee shop we all you know no we know elizabeth from young cafe or we know wayne the homeless man who sells keychains uh on young street and having that shared story and and even the challenges you know including the young street tragedy that tie us together to our geography it's a shared bond this is our strip of young street and the things that happen here matter to us and we can steward our community together. So it's been just um, a wild ride <laughs> for us. But uh, yeah, I'm so grateful for the work that we do. And um, I think, you know, we've all expanded our horizons in many ways during this time. And, you know, the next question I wanted to ask is, you know, what is one thing that you've learned about Willowdale that you didn't know before embarking on this neighbor link journey? And we'll start with Maria. I, <laughs> that Raymond Jean exists. <laughs> I can say that. Like that there are people that are just, yeah, they just know so much about this community and, you know, everyone cares about it in a different way, but it's, it's wonderful. Raymond Jean, I'm your big fan. Yeah. So. <laughs> I know we're still working on getting him to be a guest on our show. You know, he, he was a star in one of Stan Cho's election campaign videos. And now I feel like, why did Stan get preferential treatment? Anyways. <laughs> Uh, how about you, Sebastian? Yeah, I mean, for one, it's the characters. Like there are, there's just like this really rich tapestry of like beautiful, kind individuals and discovering that there is a set, a real, cause I, you know, I mentioned earlier, like may, may have not spent a lot of time here, but like I was in downtown, like trying to fly the flag of like North York and, and the suburbs, because I would talk to friends who, you know, be like, what happens North of Eglinton or North of Shepherd? Like <laughs> what goes on up there? It's like a myth to some people. So, you know, for better or for worse, like, you know, we ask the question sometimes like, what is the hidden gem? And like in the, in the grand scheme of Toronto, I feel that Willowdale is this, maybe for some people, this hidden gem because there are beautiful businesses, there is so much culture, and there, you know, to, to me, what I've learned about Willowdale is that there are so many people ready to say yes and to help and get involved. You know, we, we've got to talk to a few donors making phone calls this week. And one of the main things that people talked to me when I was like, what, what inspires you to donate is that like, they're able to help locally. So neighbors want to help their neighbors. And what's been exciting about this work is like trying to be like, here is the opportunity. Here is the, the way that we can actually do it because that want exists out there. That's what I've learned. Hmm. That's a great uh, point. And really, that's the engine of NeighborLink, right? Yeah. Without neighbors wanting to help neighbors, we could all just call it a day. So very well put. And Colleen, how about you? 
Um, so the question is, what do I, what, what have I learned about Na uh, Willowdale? Or mm -hmm. over the past year, what what is something you've learned about Willowdale? Uh, well, I'd have to go back to. Uh, uh, that question is a little hard to answer, but I'd have to go back to when go back to the van attack. And prior to the van attack, I did not think Willowdale was really anything special. I mean, we go to the take the go to go to the school, pick up the kids from school, um, uh, just interact in my own, maybe on my own street, right? Uh, after the van attack, I saw, I was really surprised by the kindness and the desire for people to come together and support the families who were impacted by the van attack. That was absolutely it was shocking to me that so many people would be walking down the street. So many people would be meeting in Mount Aspen Square. Um, so many people would want to come together, grieve together, support each other. And that was when it all started, I think, for me. And then that movement uh, of like pull, uh, everyone coming together and getting drawn together and, and, um, uh that was kind of when it all started and then, and then neighbor link is just uh the a reasonable reaction for me to join in that movement so helping people mm -hmm. connect and um so quite a such a privilege and a delight to, I guess is the word. Yeah. Um, to play a part. So I think, yes, it's, it's really like, I would not have any faith in anything that we do if I didn't know in the deepest part of my heart, how kind and mobilizable in a way our neighborhood is. And, you know, just being on that team of people who started We Love Willowdale and watching the community respond, it, it's really that gust of movement from that seed that was planted an intention to care for our neighborhood in, in the shadow of that tragedy. But in, and in some ways, I think the work that we're doing is part of the redemption of all that was lost and the pain that we had to all experience. Um, but, you know, I think for myself, one thing that I have learned um, in my time with NeighborLink and We Love Willowdale is the hidden poverty of Willowdale because we live in a multi-million dollar neighborhood to be here you know you are probably middle to upper middle to maybe even upper <laughs> uh, socioeconomic group um, but we do have pockets of poverty and because they are so enveloped in, in a wealthy community they don't get the resources, infrastructure, or attention that, you know, let's say communities at Jane and Finch or Thorncliff Park get. Uh, and as a result, I think for some of our neighbors, they could feel quite invisible. And I remember a few years ago, I helped to champion a summer camp for some of the kids. And one of the girls said to me, you know, when I walk down the street with my sister, I notice sometimes uh, our neighbors cross the street so that they're not on the same side of the sidewalk from me. And so that illuminated to me that there are people in Willowdale whose experience of life is very different from what, you know, maybe 80% of people are living, which includes food security. So uh, all this to say, you know, I think the tremendous invitation that is before us is, you know, we have over here this pocket of um, challenges and the challenges are, are intense. You know, there are people going through incredible struggle right here in the middle of Willowdale, things that, you know, some of us have never imagined or experienced. 
And over here, we have a pocket, a beautiful pocket of really caring people who want to do something. And, you know, we have this opportunity to build a bridge. Yeah. Uh, and the beautiful thing about this bridge that we are building is that both sides have gifts and talents that they can share and both sides receive. It's not about one side giving and the other receiving. It's about all of us coming together. And, you know, part of one of our highest values is humility. Like we want to listen to the people that we are serving as well as serving alongside. And that value of listening is how we can, you know, make sure that we're not just parachuting into a community and trying to solve problems. Uh, we want to empower our neighbors to be part of the solutions that are needed. So yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot of work. Sometimes, you know, I think the challenge is I feel like, oh, our, our um, capacity does not match the needs, right? Like right. if I had a bigger budget, we would hire youth workers full time. Um, we would have a full time coordinator for a food bank. Uh, there's just so much need that we could definitely expand into. But at the same time, I look at our one year, I think, wow, you know, it's not small potatoes <laughs> and the things that we have been able to see happen together. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for the amazing adventure that we have. And of course, like no episode of Meet Your Neighbor would be complete without a Willowdale rapid fire round. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 and there's no points to this, so don't worry. There's no winners or losers. So let's start with what is your favorite spot to hang out in Willowdale? And we will start with Sebastian. So, uh, so I went to Cardinal Carter Academy for the Arts at uh, Greenfield and Doris, right at Young and Shepherd. And our favorite spot to hang out was the Shepherd Center food court. We didn't really have a cafeteria, and we would. We would hang out there. It's undergone huge renovations. It's kind of sad to go back there, but you know, I was just there yesterday and I had to like go by the tables and like revisit, like take that walk down memory lane whenever I'm I'm in that intersection. Um, so that that to me is so symbolic of a, a chapter in my life in Willowdale that I, I hold really dear. I love that. Now there's like a sweet Jesus there and an LA fitness. I oh. high school Sebastian <laughs> would be like, what is this? But yeah, I miss my Calypso chicken and... Oh, there and, was a Calypso chicken? Yeah, it was awesome. Aww. Yeah, and the Piazza Mana guy was awesome. Shout out to him. Yeah, good mm. good times at the Shepherd Center. <laughs> How about you, Maria? Your favorite spot to hang out in in Willowdale? Um, I would say it's what my kids call ABC Park. So that's the North Townway Park. Um, just as a mom that's where I would often take my kids. It was an easy walk from where we lived. And now that the kids are a little bit bigger, we still go there, even though it's really for like two year olds. <laughs> we still go there after school to hang out with some friends when we can. And um, it's just nice memories. Yeah. And they, Colleen, they paved over that park too. Okay, it's not pavement, but it's yeah. They time. they they have to do that. It's supposedly safer. Yeah, when you uh, the kids bounce instead of get bruised. Yeah, you sound skeptical, Colleen. <laughs> well, you can't. You know, everybody's got their opinion, I guess, about it. But um, I, I actually the place where I like. Can I go now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so across the street from the ABC Park is actually where I like to hang out on Saturday mornings uh, with my coffee are the benches that where the Willowdale Manual Church has made their front yard into a, a nice little park itself and a tree, the tree, and you can sit and watch the, just look at their uh, their community garden, the way they've made their community garden there in the front. And um, yeah, it's so peaceful and I really appreciate what they did there. Um, mm. a quiet place to sit um, before, you know, in the morning. 
Oh. What about you, so, Lily? My favorite place to hang out, I have to have two of them. One is the splash pad at Hendon Park. Mm -hmm. um, spent a good time there with my kids in past summers. Uh, although, you know what? Glendora Park is a good one too, right? Great tobogganing. We went there yesterday. Uh, also splash pad. And we look forward to the community rink that is being set up there. So Glendora is a good one. Uh, and the other very special place for me is Mel Lossman Square because, uh, you know, the Thursday farmer's market. And that's kind of the place that really launched North York Mom. So even though, you know, we had this Facebook group, the first meetup I ever hosted was at Mel Lastman during a market and no one showed up because it was kind of rainy, but I took a picture of me and my son with a stroller and I was like, hey, I'm a real person. You know, I'm not a crazy person because obviously a lot of people on Facebook had no idea who I was. Right. But that meetup grew into like, I think we had 20 or 30 strollers lined up on the sidewalk, blankets on the little hill. We'd all get our lunch at the market. I'm so sad for the moms who, uh, because of COVID, have not been able to have that face-to-face -face community. But that was my sanity, my people, you know. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to more picnics um, there with other moms in the years to come. Okay, next question. What sets Willowdale apart from other neighborhoods? Okay, let's start with Colleen. Oh boy. Well, um, uh, that's, I, what's that? I guess we are, we are the way to uh, the connection kind of between urban and and rural and when people are they are driving through they are looking for i don't know i don't know the answer to that question um i, I grew up in small town ontario so of course it's very different from small town ontario i guess um yeah it's it's a place that's just growing and uh, it's changed a lot over the years. I remember when, like, I don't know if anyone remembers the, uh, it was a really big, ugly no frills at Young and Finch. And um, then it switched to like a Best Buy very briefly. And then finally they switched it to like, they built that road and then the shopper's drug marks there now. But um, uh, all of that was like, everything was very lowercase um you know 20 years ago and now it's like not that way at, at all i guess it's a a place that is changing maybe as more rapidly than other parts of toronto i mm. i'm not sure but i i think it looks more different than say young and eglinton or other parts of uh, toronto because um there were just, there was just there has been a lot of space that was just uh, one story for a long time, and then developers decided to come and make it into uh, a new city, and it's grown so much in twenty years. Yeah, and a special nod to uh, Mel Lastman who had the vision that this could be a center onto its own. And um, I think, you know, Mel Lastman Square is so rightfully named to honor the man behind the vision that we are all enjoying. I think we like living here because it's the cusp of the suburbs and the urban. We get a little bit of both in a very balanced way. So how about you, Maria? What's your, what do you think sets Willowdale apart from other neighborhoods? Um, I was going to say the diversity, but it's also, I guess, like you just said, the diversity in landscape. So, you know, we get a bit of a city feel. If you're close to the Young Street, you're very lucky and you get to walk everywhere. Like everything is very accessible. Um, if you're a little bit further in, like we still have, you know, a lot of people argue that there's not enough green space. And I do think we need to protect that green space. 
Um, but just knowing that I could, you know, there's enough green space where I can go cross country skiing, which we're so looking forward to next month in the hydro fields, um, or to, you know, be a five minute walk to any park um, to go with my kids. Like it's all very important. So that really, um, most people have to drive. Like if you're in the suburbs, you have to drive somewhere. And if you're downtown, you're sometimes hard fought to even find a park um, within walking distance. So I think we're very lucky. Mm. How about you, Sebastian? You know, it's Willowdale's like all I've ever known in a way. And sometimes yeah. I go like, I want, you know, so, you know, maybe a neighborhood next door to us can be like, we have that too. But, you know, talking about, you know, even Mel Lastman, his, um, a saying he had, he'd like named North York, the like city with heart. Right. So I think one it's, you know, this, this area, this neighborhood has so much heart, like the pulse of it. You can like feel it when you're like riding your bike in the neighborhood. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't say like Willowdale is the only place you can get uh, my mom, Pat's eggplant parm, uh, big ups to, to that, that you won't <laughs> find that in any other neighborhood. Um, there's also this like ginormous theater in the heart of our uh, neighborhood, the like Meridian Center there on Young Street that I hope when things get better, we can, you know, put to really, we continue to put to incredible use because, you know, there are not many neighborhoods that could have a big venue like that. So I hope, I hope it gets a lot of use in 2022. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that what sets Willowdale apart from other neighborhoods is the bubble tea selection. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why did we go this 43 minutes not talking about that? Yeah. <laughs> I was amazed. I think, you know, when I first moved here, I think there was like a couple and then another open and another one open and another. And I was like, oh, they're not going to like force each other to close because there's so much competition, but somehow new bubble tea stores just keep popping up and they have their, you know, different selling points. So uh, you're never want of a new bubble tea adventure in Willowdale. <laughs> bubble Tea Fest 2022. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad idea because they have like the indie coffee pass, right? So if you get stamps at all the indie coffee shops, then I don't know what happens, but something happens, right? So we could do a bubble tea, definitely. Hey. Um, this is where this becomes a logistical meeting and we start opening I know. the spread. Mar Maria's got her spreadsheets ready at the, ready to go, start planning Can someone this. open a Google Doc? <laughs> um, and you know, Sebastian, when you said, you know, North York is a city with heart from Mel Lastman. It just uh, made me think about our dream for 2022, which is to declare the year of kindness for Willowdale, that in a time of uncertainty, anxiety, and often resulting in divisiveness, that we really need to come together as a community and uh, champion kindness as a value that we want exemplified in all the corners of our community from schools to uh you know retirement homes to um businesses the police the firefighters like everyone can find a way to express kindness in 2022 and let's just shift the culture of our neighborhood together uh, in a world context where there's just so much pressure on all of us. Yeah. And uh, we are going to close out our rapid fire round with, you know, my favorite topic, which is food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what is your favorite place to eat in Willowdale? And give you a couple minutes to... Da -da -da -da. Okay, Maria, you start. <laughs> sushi bong. Like, you can't go wrong with sushi bong. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it is a staple for many people in our community. And some people commute to Willowdale to get their fix. Mm -hmm. uh, how about you, Maria? Oh, uh, sorry, Colleen. Um, I would say, I would definitely say Sushi Bong, but also Paisano's um, <clears throat> as always reliable, I guess you could say. Yeah. And nice. Sebastian? 
Yeah, there was, uh, speaking of sushi, like I was at Sushi One yesterday, which is closer to Young and Shepherd, also really good. And I think this is still within uh, Willowdale limits is I worked at a restaurant called Parkeggio at, uh, in the parking lot of Bayview Village. Um, that is a newer Italian restaurant for the neighborhood. And it's fantastic. I loved working there. Um, Chef Andrew Piccinin is fantastic. They have uh, one of the best lasagnas you can you can get. It's like 10 layers tall and really good tiramisu for two that I think we could all share yes. and still have leftovers. It was massive. So okay. that's one of my favorites. And you know, that reminds me that I have a distant, fuzzy memory oh. <laughs> because my husband and I don't get to go on dates as much as we would like. And on a very rare occasion, we ended up at that restaurant and I seem to have this memory that Sebastian was our waiter long before, you oh. know, yeah, really long before the podcast, like another lifetime and another version of both of us, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Lily was like, come with me, kid. And then I <laughs> threw my apron on the ground and I walked out of there that night and I said, you know what? Let's change the world. <laughs> Forget lasagna. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's hilarious. I guess we were, yeah, it was written in the stars for us to meet one way or another. I think so. I think so. Well, my favorite place to eat lately, because it changes all the time, right? Sure. I love that there's new things to try all the time. And then if I try something new, I start to crave it. And oh, I, I have to say two places that I'm really enjoying lately. One is Mom's Dim Sum. And um, the reason I love it is, you know, I used to live in Asia and for the longest time, I was like, oh, I just, where can I get a good Asian breakfast? And um, there were not many choices, but Mom's Dim Sum uh, always, you know, it has the breakfast that I remember when I lived in Asia. So I appreciate that they opened, I think they opened during the pandemic. Uh, and the other place that I've been really enjoying lately is Gall's Langzo noodles. So those are hand pulled noodles. You get to pick the thickness. It's from a, a province in China. So they have a certain spice mix to their noodles, uh, uh, to their soup base. And it's just on a cold day, it just really hits the spot. So I've been having that quite regularly. Where is it? It's where... Um, I want to say it's like where the Wild Wings building used to be. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A white, it's a white building just south of Bing, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen of Willowdale. We are the heartbeat, maybe, of NeighborLink. Uh, but, you know, we can't do this without everyone else. So... Thank you. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in to our Meet Your Neighbor series throughout the last few months. Uh, thank you to all the neighbors who have been guests on our show. We look forward to more episodes in the new year. And, you know, we do have some uncertainty in the holiday season, but please do extend a warm um, gesture or care to your neighbors because now more than ever, we just need to feel like people care about who we are and where we live. So reach out to your neighbors over the holidays, socially distant with a mask on, N95 preferred. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it really does mean something to when you reach out to your neighbors. Even a Christmas card could mean a lot to someone who lives on your floor or your street. And with that, we wave yeah. goodbye and we say good night, Willowdale. Thank you so much. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and yeah, best wishes for for 2022. And also, thank you to everyone who has donated to our our to help us reach our fundraising goal for the end of the year. We're still trying to raise our our fifty thousand dollars. Maria, what are the numbers at? We're like we've surpassed like one and a half thousand dollars which is incredible thank you willowdale thank you north york for for supporting us thus far and uh yeah we're excited for what's to come so 
happy, happy holidays and be safe and be well. And we'll play our song out and we'll dance it out, guys. Okay, okay, let's dance it out. Because we do that at all our meetings, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>